welcome to church and welcome to jolly july Woo we are officially in the second half of 2022 yes and you know what else is exciting holidays how many people are looking forward to no school and lots of play time <laughs> Well, if it's your first time here, you are welcome. You came just at the right time when we are beginning yet another blockbuster series. This month, we will have a little bit of cooking in our series titled Ingredients of a Godly Life. Are you excited already? Because I am. I will tell you more in a bit. But first, let us pray. Eyes closed and head bowed. In Jesus' name, Amen. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. We thank you for another beautiful time in your presence. Lord, we ask you to come into our lives and make us your children. We pray that we will share your word to everyone and the whole world will know that Jesus is Lord. Thank you, Lord, as you take over this service for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen.
last month was all about service. We learned that service is seeing a need and doing something about it. And that serving is all about thinking about other people's needs and feeling as if they are more important than our own. God rewards serving in secret. And if you are serving just so people will see you being nice, then that doesn't please God. It doesn't matter to God that someone knows you serve them. It matters that you cared enough to do something for them. We also learned to look for ways to help someone. Don't wait until you are asked to help. Offer to help already. If you missed any episodes in this super awesome series, then you can catch up on this and so many other impactful teachings on our YouTube page at Elevation NG. Just search for the Seeds playlist and I am super sure you will learn a thing or two and be awesomely blessed. Our verse of the month is from Psalms chapter 34 verse 8. It says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who trusts in Him. You can know about something, say an apple, and believe things about it by studying it, touching it, be carefully looking at it, asking questions and all. But you only know, as Jesus used to term, that the apple, when you bite into it and taste it. To see means to look at, observe, gaze, focus. We can't see that God is good unless we are looking at Him. And it's not just a glance every now and then, it's a gaze. We are to fix our eyes on Him. Focus. The person who trusts in God is blessed and favored. How many of you have parents who cook at home? How many of you have already started cooking with them? For some people, cooking is just another chore. But for many, cooking is a great deal of fun. Men and women and kids love to cook. Cooking at home is a wise choice because it's usually healthier than eating out. But it's also a great way to show love to friends and family. When you cook something special at home, it means a great deal to the people who pull up a chair at the dining table to enjoy your hard work. They know you put a lot of thought and effort into the meal. And that alone can make a home-cooked meal tastier than even the finest restaurant meal. Sometimes you hear people say that the secret ingredient in home cooking is love. Love is not something you keep on a spice rack or can scoop with a measuring cup. But there's definitely love in every home cooked meal. It's even in a bowl or every plate and in every scoop. Over the next couple of weeks, we'll be looking at some invisible ingredients that we all need to have a godly life. Just as a bit of flour, a bit of warm water, some yeast and some oil will make a loaf of bread, these ingredients combine in our hearts to make us disciples of Jesus. We are going to pull out a big bowl for our first ingredients today because it's an important one. If you look at most recipes, you see that the ingredients list starts with the one item you need the most of. And that's exactly the case today. Our first ingredient is trust. And it's important we have a big bowl of trust if we want to live a godly life. When I say the word trust, what comes to mind? Hmm? Hmm. Hmm? If you said believe, rely, or certain, then you are correct. Do you realize that every day you trust in a lot of different things? When you get ready to eat breakfast, you go to the kitchen and trust that your mom or dad has food there for you. Otherwise, you will starve. When you get in the car to go to school, you trust that the car won't fall apart or stop in the middle of the road. When you are dropped off at school, you trust that your mom or dad will pick you up when school is over. Has anyone ever had to wait a while for their parents at school and they didn't know where they were? Ha, it's a little scary, right? You know, you know why you get scared? 
is because the trust you had in your parents to pick you up has disappeared. Now you are worried if they will pick you up at all. All of us know in the back of our mind that our parents will eventually pick us up. But there are moments where the trust you had in them gets a little shaky. Every day, there are hundreds of things we put our trust in. So let me ask you another question. Why do you trust your parents? Have you done a complete background check on them to make sure that they are good people? No! Have you asked a bunch of their friends if they are nice and if they can be trusted? No! Have you interviewed them yourself to see if they are trustworthy? No! The reason you trust them is because of what they have done for you in the past. When you were a baby, they kept you alive. They fed you when you couldn't feed yourself. When you tried to play in the road, they stopped you before you got hurt. When you tried to eat sand, they told you that probably wasn't a good idea. You trust your parents to take care of you because they have been doing it for a long time already, right? You also trust them because they may have told you at least once that they love you. Today, we are going to talk about trusting in God. In the Old Testament book of 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 1 to 7, the wife of a man from a group of the prophets had come to see prophet Elisha. She said, your servant, my husband, is dead. You know he honored the Lord, but now the man he owes money to is coming to take my boys. He will make them their slaves. Elisha answered, how can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? The woman said, I don't have anything there except a jar of oil. Then Elisha said, go and get empty jars from all your neighbors. Don't ask just for a few. Then you must go into your house and close the door. Only you and your sons will be there. Then pour oil into all the jars. Set the full ones to one aside. She left Elisha and shut the door. Only she and her sons were in the house. As they brought the jars to her, she poured the oil. When the jars were full, she said to her son, Bring me another jar. But he said, there are no more jars. Then the oil stopped flowing. She went to Elisha and told Elisha. Elisha said to her, go and sell that oil and pay what you owe. You and your sons can live on what is left. You have to feel sorry for the widow in this story. She's in debt. She has no money and nothing she can sell to make money. She's been through so many hardships already. And now, if she can't pay some of her debts, well, her husband debt, she's going to lose her sons. Elisha tells the woman to get some jars together. He told her to pour that little oil she has left into all those jars. The first jar fills up, then the second, then the third. One by one, the oil fills each jar. And the oil doesn't run out. The woman fills enough jars. She's able to sell the oil and keep her sons. The widow had no reason to believe what Elisha told her would work. She knew how much oil was left in that first jar. How was she supposed to fill all those jars? It took a miracle to save that woman's sons. And God gave her a miracle because she trusted God. She didn't ask questions or try to analyze how much oil she had left at home. She simply trusted the prophets. God wants us to trust him as well. So that let be life. Trust is a firm belief in the character, strength, or truth of someone or something. Trust is a feeling that somebody or something can be relied upon or will turn out to be good. When I narrated the story of the widow and the oil, some of you may have remembered another story that comes later in the Bible. It's the story of a young boy who packed a box lunch to go hear Jesus preach. A crowd of 5,000 people came to hear Jesus preach. And when Jesus decided to feed the people, the boy offered up his five loaves of bread and two fish. 
like the widow with the oil. The boy knew he did not have enough food for so many people, but he trusted Jesus. And Jesus did a miracle. God wants us to put our trust in him, just like the widow and like the boy with the lunch. He gave us a book filled with stories like these so that we might believe that he is who he says he is. God wants us to read the stories, to be filled with faith, and to place our trust in him. God has a plan for all our lives. He wants first and foremost to save us from sin, and he wants us to have a relationship with him through his son, Jesus. God can use us with our bowls of trust to be a witness to the world. When people look at us, they will see people who believe just like the widow and just like the boy. They will see enough in the story of our lives to pour a bowl of trust for them. Then they too can discover a godly life. Trusting God doesn't mean everything will be okay and fun and happiness all the time. It means rather that you can trust God will be with you no matter what in the good times and in the bad times and in the sticky situations. Trust is the first ingredient to a godly life. Without trust, we might never take the first step following God. We might never have the faith to open the Bible and see where God wants to lead us. Trust that God is God. Trust that Jesus is God's Son. Trust the Bible to reveal God and what God's plan is. Trust God to lead you and you will never go astray. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for this new teaching. Help us to trust you and your word. Fill our bowl with trust for you. Teach us to taste and see your goodness. In Jesus' name, Amen. God asks us for a lot of trust. He wants us to trust that He is the one true God. And He wants us to trust the Bible to be our recipe book for life. God often asks us to step out and show how much we trust Him. And as we will have seen in today's story, when we show that we trust God, God will reward that trust with unexpected blessings. Some people have written to us that these teachings bless them and would like to give an offering to God. The different ways by which we can give are now displayed. Please note that this is optional. God bless you. This week, we have learned that trust is the first ingredient for a godly life. Trust is a feeling that somebody or something can be relied upon or will turn out to be good. We can trust that God will be with us no matter what, in good times and in the bad times and in the sticky situation. Let's check our pop quiz. What is the first ingredient to a godly life? The first ingredient to a godly life is a bowl of trust. What is trust? Trust is a feeling that somebody or something can be relied upon or will turn out to be good. Trusting God means everything will be okay and fun and happiness all the time. True or false? False. What was the widow's problem?
Her dead husband owed a debt and the debtor wanted her sons as payment. Why did the widow go and see Prophet Elisha? She went to him because she trusted him and needed his help so that her sons would not be taken as slaves. What did Elisha tell the woman to ask her neighbors for? Elisha told the woman to ask her neighbors for empty jars. When the woman started pouring oil into the other jars, what happened? She filled all the jars present and then ran out of jars. When we trust God, He will be with us only when things are good, true or false. False. What happened when the widow did what Elisha asked? She got a miracle, oil to sell to pay off the debt. What is our reward when we trust God? God rewards trust with unexpected blessings. This week, trust God to help when you need help. Spend some time reading the Bible and praying for trust this week. If you cannot read yet, as someone who can, we are on a mission to taste and see that the Lord is good. See you next time. Have a wonderful week. God bless you. I love you. Bye.